Today's video is brought to you by Seeker Strengths One to One Coaching. This is the kind of flagship of our coaching model. So what one to one coaching gets you is you'll work one to one with either myself or with Owen. You'll get a fully customized program. You'll also get a fully planned out training period. So we use a kind of hybridized modern model of block periodization. So we'll plan out your season. We'll plan out the training over the course of your season. And then we'll work with you to change your program on a weekly basis and then work with you on a, an almost daily basis via WhatsApp, giving you feedback on your videos, giving you feedback on questions you might have around training, and then just kind of generally catching up and seeing how you're getting on with your training. If you're interested, pop up an email at seekerstrength at gmail.com. So welcome back to Seekistan. Today's video, we're talking about the use of exercise or the use of sports to help with kind of your mental health. A massive amount of us have relied on or do rely on training, physical activity, the sports we play to clear our heads, to make us feel better, to generally positively affect our mental health, right? And what we're going to talk about today of some of the issues around that and particularly some of the issues around that for competitive athletes. So everyone understands that there is positive affect to be drawn out of, of physical activity there's positives to doing a sport and that's why most of us do it right we feel better afterwards now there's a, a host of reasons why we feel better then there's multiple different streams of, of kind of efficacy to, to different levels of physical activity so um, a lot of time we we just get this disassociation so if i'm rolling and doing jiu-jitsu it's very difficult for me to concentrate on something else or for me to be distracted of thinking about work or thinking about other responsibilities i have also we get the positive physiological side effects that can help our psychology so if i'm doing a lot of aerobic work and i'm doing a lot of running my cardiovascular endurance will increase and then when we make the physical organism more healthy or more cardiovascularly healthy we're more likely to have positive psychological benefits than we are if we're making it less healthy so there's multiple streams we also have the the endorphin hypothesis that will state you'll get some sort of high after exercise this particularly happened during uh, aerobic work that you're getting some sort of release of endorphins after aerobic exercise now you'll hear me say aerobic or the endorphin hypothesis there and um, there's a, a bit of conflicting evidence on that but nobody can deny basically that doing physical activity of a few different forms can be very beneficial for your mental health where the issues lie for us though is that a lot of the time we're dealing with athletes and we're dealing with people who want a high level of performance in sport but they might also be reliant on that sport or that physical endeavor for their mental health their general psychological well-being and we have an issue here right so the the main issue we're going to talk about today is this how we might want to firstly identify this issue and then how we might want to work around it or have an alternative stream for clearing our head and then a, a better stream for getting better at our sport now but you didn't expect to see me on a seeker psychology, seeker psychology video so i want to talk about why treating training like your therapy sessions is going to take you down a very negative and very fatal feedback loop so if we start training and use it as a therapy session so if we go to the gym and it makes us feel good and we have a solid session we feel good after it we slowly begin to tie our mood with the quality of sessions we have however as a lot of you know and you're already probably thinking this as i'm saying this that sessions don't always go good sessions in fact rarely go very well very often sessions are middling even if you're training with the best possible program you have great talent you have everything nutrition sleep diet all of these things in the best possible scenario they could be we know a lot of the time training sessions don't feel amazing a lot of times these training sessions require us to push through and a lot of times these training sessions don't match up to the expectations we had for that session a lot of times we'll barely get done what we need to do now the problem is a lot of times the people who use our training as a therapy session whether they know it or not will often not have the rest of these areas of their life massively in control they'll also not be following a program that will put them in a scenario where productive training will happen. So when we're training, we really need to be focused on a positive outcome and we're looking for a growth mindset and we're really kind of goal oriented at the end of sessions while also still realizing that the sessions we do now are for a longer term goal and they're not to put us in a place where we're looking for a very 
large amounts of self gratuitous training sessions. And we're not doing what we want to do. We're doing more of what we need to do per session. And so what happens when people are treating these sessions like their therapy sessions as they go in, they're using this as a therapy session. They know they're looking forward to the gym. The gym is something that when they train well, they feel good after but they start using this every single day. They don't follow a productive program. They don't have any plan in place. And then slowly these sessions decrease in quality. Now, a lot of times these may not be professional athletes, so there's a lot of other areas of their life that are putting pressure on them. And this is possibly one of the reasons that they're using training as a therapy. So when we come into training sessions, we're already under a huge amount of stress. We're not following a good program. And we're not training in a way that makes sense and is sensible, but we're coming in off the back of bad sessions and thus we start trying to force these sessions to feel better even though it may not make the most sense for what a good session is and then we slowly start having negative thoughts around training and we end up on this hamster wheel of trying to force these training sessions to feel better on top of all this outside of our training when we are associating training with negative feelings and we rely on training for those positive feelings if you're one of these individuals and you'll probably know if you are The rest of your life, as we mentioned, may not be in the best possible scenario right now. You may not be dealing with it in the best possible manner. And so we end up with what was a life that you're dealing with and training sessions that we hoped would provide some positive feedback. Now we've ended up with two very bad environments outside the gym and inside the gym. And we end up in this terrible cyclical cycle of bad training session, bad mood, bad mood in life, back to bad training session. We don't have this clarity of realizing this is what we need to do in training today. Imagine for one of these individuals, the best possible scenario might be, listen, you need at least two weeks away from the gym. You just need to forget about the gym. You need to have a routine. You need to get up in time. You need to sort out your workplace environment. You need to sort out your home environment. You need to forget about the gym just for a little bit. For a lot of these people, this would be absolutely unimaginable. So we really end up in this bad cycle of bad sessions, bad life, bad sessions, bad life. And this goes on for a very, very long time until something catastrophic can happen. And we see this quite a bit. It's where someone will get a very, very intense injury or very uh, training altering injury. So this won't affect their daily life as such, but it may be an injury that could last for 18 months of poor sessions. And if you're unsure and you don't know that you're actually in this terrible kind of cyclical negative cycle of training uh, for therapy, you'll end up with a very, very poor and potentially what we don't want to happen is not only will those negative emotions come away from the gym, they'll start bringing those negative emotions into life. And essentially you will have kind of backed yourself into a corner when you're looking for productive and positive goal oriented action. So the thing sometimes people make a mistake with when it comes down to training, I think, is that when you're training, it's very easy to see your progress, especially when we're training in the gym. It's kind of really what we're talking about here, but athletes do a lot as well. You know, we add kilos to the barbell and we know we've gotten better at stuff. Whereas a lot of times we can do this with a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily have to be with the gym. So as Owen said, there's loads of things you can do that will get you those positive effects, but also not negatively impact your sport. And that brings us on to the next section. The next section is, okay, so what do I do now, right? If, if sport's the thing that makes me feel good or this amount of physical activity or training makes me feel good, what do I do now? Well, the first thing I think you need to do is realize that sport is there for sport's sake, right? So sport, competitive endeavors that you're aiming to win and aiming to get better at. It's not ideal to use it because no matter how good you are at sport, no matter how hard you try, no matter how diligent you are with your programs, all the things like Gurf was saying, you're probably not going to be the best at it. And and it, it's very, very rare you're going to raise or ascend to a certain level of efficacy where, where you're going to be able to do everything in your life perfectly and sport will work out perfectly, right? Think of the best performers in the world, right? Think about the Michael Jordans of whatever sport you want to think about. They'll still have their bad days with sport. And so sport is an inherently flawed tool for this kind of medicine through exercise, right? So sport really isn't where we want to be looking. Sport is great. Sport has its own benefits. Uh, But it's really not the tool we want to use, right? So we move on next and we say, okay, what is the tool we want to use, right? So physical activity, uh, be that planned or unplanned. So whether it's exercise or whether it's just physical activity, whether it's training or whether it's exercise, 
the second thing you want to realize is, is that that physical activity or that exercise is a tool. It's certainly a tool. It's used by psychologists and psychotherapists around the world, but it's not the tool. And it's very unlikely that if you're a competitive athlete, it's ever going to be the tool for you. Or if you want to succeed in your sport, that it should be the tool you look to use, right? Now, we're not going to go through the tools today. Those tools are for for qualified medical professionals to to recommend and to prescribe and and to, to use with you or to advise you to use and then refer you on to other aspects afterwards. But it's really important that you know that this isn't the only thing for you. It might be the first thing you've tried. It might be the hundredth thing you've tried and it's the first thing that has worked or has any semblance of, of effect on you. But it's really important to note that this isn't the only tool and that there is loads of help out there that you can get, whether that's to de-stress or to allow you to handle stress better, whether it's for that kind of 45 minutes or 60 minutes of rest by two to three times a week, whatever it is, there's loads of other options out there. And that brings me on to my third thing, right? A lot of the time we're getting some sort of positive feeling around sport, particularly with sport and not just physical activity, because with sport, we get that sense of accomplishment, right? We get that sense of I'm doing something to become better, right? I'm doing something to become more inherently valuable to society or to myself or to my family, right? I'm becoming a better powerlifter, so I'm now better for the powerlifting community. People will respect me more. There are a huge amount of things you can do, whether that is through something like the maker movement, whether it's through exploring your interest in cooking or music that will allow you to get that same feeling. Now, it won't have the positive effects on your health in the same way where exercise or training or sport, all those three different things in the same way where they might positively affect your health, but they can have massive positive effects in other areas of your life, you know? Um, and so don't always look to use this thing that you're wholeheartedly obsessed with. Uh, it, it's very negative and it's very maladaptive to be putting that kind of pressure on something that already has so much pressure on it. Like sport is inherently unfair. It's inherently difficult to do well at. The last thing you want to do now is is to give it that extra burden of also being your kind of main source of, of psychological freedom uh, or mental health freedom. So I hope you liked today's video. If it's something that kind of made sense to you or some of the things we were saying were kind of reminiscent of, of things you might have been thinking yourself, I'd really like to hear your comments uh, down below. If you like seeing Gurf in the Seeker Psychology videos, we'd like to see your comments down below on that as well. Because uh, it's great. It's great not to be in the, the lonely hole of recording on my own. Uh, and we'll talk to you all again soon.